Hello everyone, welcome to another Nano Reno playthrough on VNSNOW TV and VNSNOW.com. I am your humble host as always, JP the Third, with you with uh, Scallywags this time by Rosen Entertainment and Team Tomo. Usually I go through the synopsis, tell you what we've been doing and all that other stuff, but this is literally my sixth take doing this. I kept having a problem with my recorder and that has led to some uh, interesting outtakes which nobody will ever see ever as decreed by me uh so instead of all of that i'm just going to start the game and i'll fill you guys in as we go so here we go there's actually a pretty interesting backstory between me and rose and entertainment they used to be called zap apple and zap apple is responsible for a little my little pony visual novel demo from a few years ago called star swirl academy and uh let's set about that the better <laughs> Let's just hope this one is pretty good. The um, Nano Reno game they did in 2014 was decent. Wait, is that the background? Is that supposed to be a ship? Oh god. Okay. Uh, let's just get get into it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be staring at this artwork all day. Gonna hop off the deck first without a care for the 7,000 foot feet drop between our ship and the pier. Well, that can't be right. If that was right, she'd be dead. I don't care where if she's supposed to be some kind of secret immortal or any of the other supernatural tricks people like to throw in this situation. I don't know. Let me see. Okay. <laughs> let me let me stop. But I can I, I don't want to get hung up on the first sentence. But this is the first scene in the first sentence. <laughs> Oh god, I don't know what I'm getting into now. She walks around on the wooden floorboard, stretching her arms and legs. No idea why, it's not like she were sitting down the whole journey here. Less can st sit still. At last, she turns back to us. What you waiting for, Swabby? That's gotta be like 20, 30 pounds of gold she's holding in one little sack. <laughs> really? Swabby may be quivering in her boots, but I can hardly blame her. She's on the edge of the ship, carrying a sack of great value. She can't see her feet, and the wind's picking up. So, uh, someone wants to help her with the bag? Anybody? Uh, bless her boots. We may be small, but that doesn't stop her from her trying. Actually, considering she's shaking and bending at the knees. Captain, I request permission to help Swabby. Uh, I guess that's me. Uh... Back off first, mate. The girl can look after herself. She's holding like 20 pounds of gold. And she's 80 pounds soaking wet. No. She really can't. I won't deny she looked after us plenty of times, but it doesn't change. Oh, blimey. She made it. Oh. That's, that was a hell of a leap. Gunner had to catch her before she fell. They should both be dead. They should both... I'm going to go ahead and knock off that fantasy box on the card. <laughs> and before anybody gets started, I'm not talking about gender. I'm talking about physics. It's a 7,000 foot drop from the ship to the pier. Both of them may weigh, what, a combined 150, maybe? In that or stretching it, you're talking more about maybe 120, 130. She's holding 20, 30 pounds of gold. Add in centripetal force of her jumping from the pier 7,000 feet into her arms. They should both be dead. Or at the very least unconscious. So, barring the fact that... Well, <laughs> barring the facts and considering they're both alive, we are going with fantasy. Cat may be CERN, but she always makes the right decisions. Well, not always. But she's fair, selfless, and her moral compass is pointed to the right pole. Well, okay. She's a jerk. Let's just say it and be done with it. Actually, I forget why she's in charge. I guess you're right. Of course I'm right. Now get your ass off my ship. Aye, Captain. Try not to look down. I waited for the ship to drift closer to the docking bay, then made a quick step off onto the damp wooden floorboards. Have these people never heard of a gang plank? No. No, they have not. Phew. 
I stand by Gunner and Swabby, looking back at the ship as, as Captain uh, makes quite a clumsy act, leap, actually, and... Ah, she hit the dock, at least. Fear not, your captain is fine. That's clearly not addressed to Gunner, who her go who's laughing her goggles off. Captain pats the dirt off her coat, snarling at the hyena of the crew. It'd be a wonder we survived this long. It'd be a wonder I let you survive this long, ye scurvy dog. <laughs> ye let me. Come on, lasses, not now. Oh, boy. Here we go. This baby be unstable. It's swaying all over the place. So I'll be now that she makes another quick step to hold her balance. Captain and Gunner quit staring each other down. You'd be correct, first mate. Come on, crew. Let's get inside before I throw up. Oh, if you do, aim for the birds. That's disgusting. It's damn tricky and all. Did I tell you about the time I was sick? I... What, the one with the seagulls? Yes. Ah, well, that's a different story. You haven't heard the one with the bald eagle. I tell you, he wasn't bald for... Ugh. Okay. Gunner, stop. Yes, please. They continue with Gunner's idea of small talk as we make our way to the pub's entrance. Hold on to me hat to stop it blowing away. The hum of the engines keeping, keeping this place in the sky get dimmer the closer we get to the pub. Yeah, it's better in here, somewhat. It's lovely and warm in here. The gentle murmurs of the patrons enhance the cozy atmosphere. We sit quietly at our table, waiting for Swabby to return with the drinks. I can't stand the tension when I'm left alone with these two. They're like sitting between a pair of air mines. Alas, Swabby returned. The barman said he'll come over to us. Captain nods and Swabby climbs onto her stool, bunching closer to the table and making a racket. We were all guilty of this as our feet can't touch the ground. Okay, are they kids or midgets? Uh, can, can we get a confirmation on that? Someone? Anyone? Right then, now the biz business. Gummer drum rolls the table excitedly. First mate, if you please. Aye, aye, Captain. Finally, the moment we've all been waiting for. I lean forward and drag the sack over to me. Blimey, poor Swabby had to jump carrying this thing. Again, she should be dead. But feeling the weight of it excites me like no other. It be everything we worked for. The light at the end of the tunnel. I grab each end of the bag and pour its contents onto the table. All of that was seriously... No. Look at this. Look at the size of this ruby. There are two crowns in here. Look at the size of these coins. How? And, well, uh, before we, I go any further, <laughs> never mind, I was going to make another note here, but I realize time is not with us. Let's keep going. The noise turns a few heads, but thankfully no heads look to be the sort to steal from us. You, none of your feet touch the ground. Like, you're in a bar with that much money and nobody, nobody even considers coming over, knocking a few hairs, and taking it. Can I get a double check for fantasy? This is getting ridiculous. What an opportunity it would be to swipe all that lay before us. I put, I put the sack aside. Gunner lets out a whistle as our jaws drop in awe. Alright, no matter how many times I see it, it never fails to take a captain's breath away. It'd be giving me goosebumps, to say the least. This treasure, this bundle of riches, is the reward for every scrap we've gotten ourselves into the, for the past few months. And I wasn't worth it. What did you do? Are you going to... Well, maybe they'll tell us later. And they just can't say, hey, we've earned this through our hard work and blood and sweat and tears. And not describe the events that got us here, right? Right? Just think of... Just think what I can buy with even a handful of this. We'd be in for a treat, that's for certain. Wait, we stole all this treasure, so why don't we just steal the things we actually want? That's a fair point, you're pirates. There's no point in buying stuff with, when you can just steal stuff. I mean, if you're already not a first to, 
There I go putting lodging into this thing. Don't ruin a moment, Swabby. Sorry, Captain. Let me know who the logical one in this one is. I and don't be thick. You can't steal a mansion. She's right. Yo ho, bloody ho, she's right. Technically, you can. I mean, if there are pirates running around, you just gotta go into the house, kill everybody, and keep going. No, no longer will I have to sleep in that flying death trap. Why, I could even get my own flying death trap. Not a chance, Miney. I'm giving up being a spy, spy, <laughs> sky pirate. Excuse me. I lived me life on the edge for far too long. I'll never work again. Me future is before me and it's pure gold. But right now, I'm happy to just stare and dream. I for one have me head rested in me palms and me elbows on the table. Me dreams will soon become a reality. I'm going to buy a tank. I suddenly want to look at Swabi. She catches me eyes and shrugs. For protection. I'm guessing that was supposed to be funny. Yeah. That's all I gotta say to that. I, I was gonna say, I can't imagine you driving around blowing stuff up. That's something Gunner would do, says I. I, daddy be. Oh, stop it, mateys. This is how... Yes, the most stereotypical uh, sailor talk in all of history. You laugh now, but you weren't laughing when you nearly got us all killed. Not this again. How was I supposed to know the cannon was turned the wrong way? It's actually pretty obvious. You're the gunner. It's your bleeding job. You know what? I was aiming for your fat head. I can't believe I missed. Usually, I make a belligerent sexual tension joke here, but since we haven't answered the midget child question yet, that just makes me uncomfortable. So, we're gonna move on. Well, you're not getting another chance because this is it, it's all over. Thank Jupiter for that. Captain punches her chest and clears her throat. So, here we be. Me and Swabby sit up straight. Gunner moans and flops her head against the table. It'd be fitting that Captain gives us a speech. It could very well be our last. We, the foulest yet most triumphant crew that ever set flight in the vast, chilly, perilous expanse of condensation. Gunner Swabby turned to me. She means the sky, lasses. Then why doesn't she? Why don't she just bleed and say so instead of dilly dallying with her stupid words? Aye, why do you, Captain? I'm trying to give me crew a rousing speech, if you don't mind. This could easily be, you know what, I bet you this is. I'm I'm going to bet right now, put money on the table. This is a, it's a, it's a twist. There's gonna be a twist ending where it's just these four girls playing in the background, in their backyard pretending to be pirates. Cause this is, all the dumb humor, the fact that they admit that they're tiny, flying around in the sky, their kids pretending to be pirates. I'm gonna just put that there and yeah, I believe that to be correct. No thanks. Quiet ye. I'm enjoying it so far, Captain. Ye be a last of fine taste, Swabby. But Captain only spoke a couple of lines, one of which ye didn't even wrap your head around. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Swabby bows her head slightly. Don't argue with the girl, first mate. Know her feelings to be honest and true. Aye, aye, Captain. Don't throw me off deck. Get on with it. Captain closes her eyes and adjusts her hat. As I were saying, we know gutters have sailed air currents far and wide, probably taking with ours everything. Yeah, ha ha, now you're talking. No ship dare cross us. No politician dare tame us. Aye, no landlubber can stop. It is crap, there's a guy. If it was just focused on them, I would have had an all female cast square, but nope. Here's your drink, kids. Okay, so we answered the mid kids are midget question, so this I'm going with my theory. They're in the backyard pretending to be pirates, and that's like their dad or something. One of their or older brother. Oh, thank you. The bartender places our drinks onto the table, throwing glances at the shining loot in the middle. Um, if there's anything else I can help you with. What in the name of Jupiter is that, Swabby? <laughs> 
he's staring at your treasure and you're staring at her frou-frou drink. Worst pirates ever. The bartender goes and walks away silently. Swabby looks back and forth between her drink and Captain. Captain? Maybe to Morgan? To the Summer Spirit cocktail, Captain. It's made of fruit juice. Summer Spirit? We all got root beer. What you playing at? <laughs> oh God! I think I, I think I'm right. God, this will be the first one. Cause sometimes I'll guess the ending, but I won't tell you guys. If I'm right about this, this will be the first one that I've predicted out loud and got right, which will be amazing for me. It'd be bad for our public image, Swabi. We must impose fear into all who dare gaze. Alright, let's stay fear the blackguard and her mixture of fruity sensations. As I was saying, no landlubber can stand in our way. This bountiful booty will be ours to mark the many adventures we had, and a great reminder to those air headed enough to fight back. And a jolly great reminder to ourselves the finest crew a captain can have. Cheers! Captain raised her glass towards the center of the table. We all leaned forward to chink our glasses together, making rowdy noises. It's actually rather polite if you ask me. I'll fall back into the stool and take a big swig. Opening my eyes for a second, I noticed Swabby frowning at the little umbrella in her cocktail, which has snapped in half. In spite of this, she shrugs and takes a zip from the straw. She seems happy enough. As am I. It feels bloody great to hear Captain talk keenly about us for a change. Captain finishes her swig and slaps her beer sign onto the table with a loud sigh. Gunner's still chugging hers down, of course. Ah, we've been through a lot, we have. You can say that again, Captain. I won't, but when I look back on all of our adventures, I think to myself, Captain sniffs and wipes her eye. I think, blimey, I'm, go I'm jolly glad I was there for all of them. Don't touch me, first mate. Sorry, Captain. I was with ye lot every step of the way. Not a single milestone reached without me presence. I nothing was accomplished without me overseeing things, and we know where this is all going. She wants the biggest share. Suddenly, Captain leans across the table and wraps her arms around the majority of the loot, dragging it close to her. Gunner, still chucking, stares at the loot as it slides away. Which is why I've earned the biggest share. Well, of course. How oh, very, very predictable. Gunner chokes on her drink. She has got to be joking. Ye what? I trust y'all in agreement. I think our expressions get the message across. Swabby looks both sad and confused, like a dog who's owner threw her favorite toy over the fence. Gunner's just trying to breathe again. But, Captain. After a choking fit, Gunner slammed the fist against the table, making everything jump and clatter. I'll have something to say about it, you lily livered swine. That'd be no way to speak to you, Captain. Kiss the sequel. <laughs> or they're definitely little kids. Swabby so giggles until she meets Captain's penetrating stare and submits to silence at once. I don't wish ye to kiss a bird or nothing, Captain, but shiver me timbers. Need I remind y'all ye all who's in charge? Technically, Captain, captains aren't dictators. If a majority of the crew members disagree on something, then the captain can be overruled. And I think she's right. She is right. And they made fun of me for reading the Sky Pirate Handbook. Aha, mutiny. I should have known. In fact, I knew from day one ye bow scrapings would betray me. Not what I meant, Captain. I why not? Come on, I love a good mutiny. Maybe no reason for a gunner. You want a reason? How about the lack of respect we get for all of our hard work? Eh? Huh? Hang on a minute. Girls, no. Gunner falls back on her stool and waves a hand. Ah, uh, like this foot look or whatever, pick a side anyway. What did ye say? Ye heard me. You're a flip flop, ye are. First, ye agree with me, then ye agree with Captain. Pathetic. You're just saying that because you know deep down she's on my side. Aye. I wouldn't mind so much if she actually stood by ye, but she always sides with whoever has the last word. Well, when you put it like that. Are you serious? Are. <laughs> they. You know what? <laughs> See? Oh, you're right. I'd be a puppet. No, you're not, first mate. You just have an open mind, that's all. No, she's a literal puppet. She just 
does what she just goes whatever the way the wind blows. And the captain's a blowhard and an idiot, and the gunner's a blowhard and an idiot. Which means that this is either going to end in blood or tears or stupidity. I'm hoping for blood and tears. Uh, but we're going to put a pin in it right there. Um, we're at the 20 minute mark, and I will be back in another video to continue this. Um, this may actually be shorter than an hour, we'll see. In the meantime, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these uh, videos. And uh, check out VNSnow.com. That's VNSnow.com for all reviews, previews, and actually a pretty big news story we're working on that should be out in another few days. Oh, and like the video too. If you like it, what you see, like the video, and more will be coming very soon. Uh, hopefully, this will get better. Right now, it's just. It, it went downhill really fast. So maybe it'll swing back up. We'll see. Till next time.